reunite with the Rockets. We know Harden is expected to decline his player option and hit free agency. Bill, based on your sources and your conversations and what you're hearing, what more can you tell us about this possible reunion with Harden in Houston? Yeah, I was in Chicago this week for, for the draft combine. And other than maybe Victor um, Webanyama being drafted number one overall, the, the biggest sense of surety in the NBA, talking to executives, GMs, folks around the NBA, is the belief that James Harden is going to be a Houston Rocket next year. We know the owner loves him and wants him back. We know that James Harden has a player option that he's almost certainly not going to and should not uh, opt into, that he's going to seek a major deal, a big deal. We know the Rockets have the cap space to do that. His family still lives. His mother still lives in Houston. He's got businesses there. Everything I've heard from every person in the NBA is the belief that Harden wants to be a Houston Rocket. They want him to be a Rocket, and that is all but a done deal and will get finalized once free agency rolls around in July. And really quickly, Bill, I mean, what does Houston look like with Harden there? And then it feels like the Sixers can't really afford to lose him. So what does that mean for Philly as well? Yeah, look, I think it depends how you view James Harden in terms of how you view his ability to build a culture because this is a this is a Rockets team that is young. Ime Adoka is going to come in as the head coach under some controversy and try to grow a culture and take some of these young players and transition them to winning, but no one thinks the Rockets win now. So they like the idea of Harden there in part because they think he could be an example for excellence in Houston. As for the six, you're, you're, you're right. We'll, we'll see. Maybe the money will change their minds. There's no doubt in my mind that Daryl Morey, who runs basketball operations for Philly, will try to find a way to pay James Harden. But again, I, everyone I've talked to thinks Harden is good as gone, and it becomes a really difficult situation. If you think Tyrese Maxey can fill some or all of that offensive void, maybe they can be okay. That'll be a big part of the task who, of whoever they hire as the head coach to replace Doc Rivers to, to be able to make up for maybe the Harden's absence offensively with the pieces they have. But you're right. From a contract perspective, there's not going to be a lot of financial flexibility if Harden leaves for this Sixers team to find a similar level of talent. All right, that is our NBA insider Bill Ryder diving into the conference finals and some news around the association with us here on CBS Sports HQ. Thank you so much, Bill. We appreciate it. And getting a look at the upcoming conference finals games in the East. We have the Celtics trying to avoid a second straight loss tonight to the Heat. Tip there from TD Garden is set for 8 Eastern. And then out West, the Nuggets and the Lakers. That series shifts to L.A. for Game 3 on Saturday, where the Lakers are 8-0 so far in the postseason. When you're up 13 in the first quarter, um, and you give up an and one, or you turn the ball over in transition, or uh, you take a tough shot, or you have a turnover at the rim and they get out. So it, it, it happens before you even stop to think that it's happening. And, and in both games, it's been that way where, you know, we're up 13, we build a good lead, and then with two minutes to go in the quarter, we kind of give a team life. And so that's why end of quarter, start of quarters, and just executing is so important. I think we're, you know, I, I, we don't, we're not happy with just saying, okay, we got one, I think we just go out there and we want to play and, and, and lace them up and, and get a chance to win two. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we're competitors and we want to be competing at the highest level at all times. And I think that's where we are focused on, trying to find a way to compete at the highest level and get another win. Boston is just four and four at home during the postseason. They've lost four of their last six. Mm. No team has ever lost five home games in a postseason and gone on to win the NBA title. It's been a fun one so far, Bill. And Jimmy Butler and company trying to snag another win in game two. We know the Heat are the underdogs. They really have been in this entire playoffs as they are the eight seed. They don't play like it. We heard Jimmy saying there, we don't care what you think if you pick us to win. Bam, Kyle Lowry, they're saying the same things in the post-game uh, press conferences. And it seems like that mindset, Bill, has done them very well in the playoffs. Yeah, th this team absolutely believes that they're good enough to win an NBA championship. And, and I can tell you that I talked to someone in their front office a few weeks before the playoffs began, and they made the case to me that I should say that here on CBS Sports HQ and write it at CBSSports.com that the Heat were real contenders. And I rolled my eyes. I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe they believed it. But obviously, you scratch your head. He said we had the right mindset heading into the game, despite obviously them losing game one. Celtics are now four and four at home in the postseason. What adjustments, Bill, in your opinion, need to be made? from the Celtics for game two, if they want to even out the series. Yeah, there are a few. I mean, the first thing, and good luck with this, is to try to find a way to slow down Jimmy Butler, but no one's been able to do that in this postseason. That is a easier thing said 
than done. They've also got to counter the plan that Eric Spolstra came up with. Spolstra, the Heat's head coach, did not want the Celtics to average around 39 three-point shots per game, taking a bevy of threes. They only took, I think it was 29 in that first game. They've got to get more balls and good shots from deep. And they've got to find situations for Jason Tatum to get in rhythm, get comfortable, and feel good that he can take over games. But I think Jacqueline, the might the main change might just just on fire. 37 points, 23 of those coming in the fourth. Um, Bill, I'm curious to get your take. How could, could the Lakers not really make any adjustments to stop Jamal Murray? Is that a player thing? Is that a Darvin Ham thing? It just seemed like they couldn't adjust to keep up with Jamal Murray in the fourth there. Yeah, I had this conversation with the scout th this morning just to make sure what I was seeing was what the experts were seeing. I, I don't know that the Lakers did anything wrong. I mean, you had moments where Anthony Davis at the end of that game in that quarter was playing pretty good defense on the perimeter against Murray, and he still found ways to get his shot off. He was in the absolute zone. He was hitting shots that you just shouldn't be able to under that kind of pressure, and it's easy to forget because the guy's never been an All-NBA player. He's never been an All-Star. He missed a huge chunk of time, missed 2021 with a pretty serious injury. That this guy in the bubble back in 2020 in that moment. Yeah, we just saw that video where he hits a three and then looks over and says, bang, that was a, a, pretty, a pretty clutch moment there. All right, let's talk more about the Lakers. They've lost four straight road playoff games. L.A. struggling from the three-point line in game two, only making eight threes there, eight of 30 beyond the arc. I mean, Bill, when I'm watching this game, it's just, it's like, it's rough to watch them trying to shoot those threes, and then it seemed like a miss after a miss after a miss. Yeah, and LeBron James, who I thought actually had a pretty good game. I I'm not sure the narrative was fair on LeBron despite the missed dunk. He was 0 for 6 from the three-point line, and you're right. That was a part of the reason. But if I'm Darvin Ham, I'm taking D'Angelo Russell out of the lineup just for this series because this is not his series to play in. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's been completely ineffective. And AD, I mean, talking about, hey, it's going to be an odd game. He'll play better. Listen, this is just a, really a tired narrative. It's not going to get them to the finals. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's talk about Jamal Murray because we have to give him and the Nuggets their flowers uh, and, and many, many bouquets of flowers. He is healthy and dangerous. He won this game in the fourth quarter. And to put it in perspective, just how he carried Denver, his 23 points, that was just one less than the entire Lakers team. 23-point fourth quarter tied for the third most points in a fourth quarter over the last 25 postseasons. Only Allen Iverson in 01 and Ja in 2023 have had more. Perk, this is so impressive. That was his fourth 20-point performance in the fourth quarter of a playoff oh. game. How unstoppable is this team if he's playing like that in addition to Jokic having yet another triple-double? Well, well, Hannah, I want to say thank you. Thank you, for, because now the national media is actually talking about the Denver Nuggets. Now Michael Malone could chill the hell out. Like, what does it matter if we're talking about the Denver Nuggets uh, or what they're doing? Matter of fact, we have been talking about them all the time. We talk about Jokic and his greatness. But it shouldn't matter if in the locker room you all about winning championships. It shouldn't matter what the outside noise is, uh, what we're talking about on the outside, but that's neither here nor there. But when it comes down to Jamal Murray, it's the two-man game with him and Jokic. It is basically unstoppable. And when he gets those, and when he get those mismatches that he wants, and he gets you on that island, and he gets the cooking, it's a problem. And we're seeing a healthy Jamal Murray that we saw go toe to toe in the bubble with Donovan Mitchell. That we saw tanned it up in the bubble when he took this team to the Western Conference Finals. So, you know, him being healthy, he's one of the purest scores that this game has to offer. And the Lakers are probably going to have to treat him like Steph Curry. They're going to have to trap him at times late in the fourth quarter. Because once a person show you who they are, you got to believe them. That's right. And they have been talking about wanting to win a championship. They've been talking. Not mm -hmm. that anybody has been listening. All right. But now... They have everyone's <laughs> attention. Big Perk, we love you. I know, you're shaking your head in disbelief, but here we are. Yeah. Get ready, Ooh. folks. And coming up...